I've always been fascinated by the, the story of Elijah and Elisha. This kid's out there plowing the field. He oxen, yoke, he's busy doing what he's meant to be doing. And uh, this man walks past him and hits him. Can you imagine if you were minding your own business, someone just walked up and whapped you uh, with his cloak. But that moment, that divine moment, when divinity touched that young boy, he ran after the, the prophet Elijah and said, look, let me go and say goodbye to my mother and father. And the prophet said the most ridiculous thing. He says, what have I got to do with you? Go back to your plow. And there's a moment in your life, listen to me watching us today, listen to what I'm saying. There's a divine spark moment in your life when everything changes. If he'd kept plowing, if he'd kept the oxen, if he'd kept the yoke, one day he would have owned the farm. But suddenly, when divinity smote him and, and touched him, the yoke didn't matter, the oxen didn't matter, the farm didn't matter. And when he ran after the prophet, the prophet says, go back and say, you know, let me go back and say, and the prophet says, go, go back to your plow. And at that moment, his family didn't matter because he was going to follow the anointing. And Rich, I've watched this many years in, in ministry. A lot of folk get touched and blessed and quickened for a moment. The mantle touches them. But instead of making it their life's commission and their life's work, that they say, well, nothing else matters. I'm going to follow after the, the anointing. After a few moments, they go back to plowing again. And they never again get that opportunity. And if you read the story of Elisha and Elijah, which is the great, the great transfer of anointing, every time he went somewhere, people were saying, you know, your, prophet, your, your, your master's being taken away from you. And he says, yep, I, I don't talk about that, but yes, I know. He was following behind the great man of God, Elijah, knowing that one, one moment, the same kind of moment that happened back at the plow, was going to happen again, and this time it wouldn't be temporary. It was going to be the real anointing falling and, and a permanency of leadership came upon Elisha. And the Bible says this in, 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 uh, it's in uh, let me find, it's second, second Kings uh, chapter 2, and going up to uh, verse 9, it says, And so it was when they crossed over that Elisha sa Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I may do for you, before I am taken away from you. And Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Not God's spirit, your spirit. I, I want to be like you. I want to feel what you feel. I want to sense the awareness of God in my life. I've watched your awareness of God. And if we can have a core principle in our churches today, that as we move from generation to generation, that the oil that flowed down from Aaron's beard, when it hit the hem, it was the same oil. So whatever you right. touched Aaron, whether it was his beard or his hem, it was the same flowing oil. And, and real transition, successful transition, is when the oil, the anointing that is in the head, is all the way down to the hem. So when someone is in the parking lot, meeting people coming in to church for Sunday morning service, whoever they meet, they should have the same sense of anointing as the, the leadership of the church. And that is how trans, transfer of ministry and anointing and then transition of generationally takes place successfully. Elijah and Elisha, the same thing.